Hello. I hope you're doing okay in these troubling times. My name is David McMillan, and I'd like to say a few words about the purpose of MathCat. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that everything we see is a shadow cast by that which we do not see. And it is true that our impact often extends far beyond the sphere of our intentions. And that's why evidence-based policy is so important to avoid the unintended consequences of well-intentioned policies, to prevent bad things from happening instead of just reacting to them. Now, this requires an understanding of at least three major themes, each of which is covered in the Harris Core curriculum. The first is causal inference, to measure the root causal impact of a certain policy while giving credence to the fact that correlation is not causation. That's something that you'll learn about in statistics and econometrics. The second major thing is why? Why is it the case that this policy had that particular causal impact? What are the mechanisms that gave rise to that causal effect? Why do people respond to certain incentives in certain ways? That's something that will be covered in economics. And then finally, the third major thing is analytical politics to think strategically about how to get policy passed into law given the incentives of those in power and different stakeholders, to understand voting behavior, to understand voters. Now, all three of these major themes rely fundamentally on the building blocks known as algebra and calculus. Algebra and calculus basically constitute the language that the instructors will use when teaching you about statistics and econometrics, when teaching you about economics, and when teaching you about analytical politics. That's the purpose of Math Camp, to get students acclimated to understand the language that the instructors will be using in the core. Now, there may be times during Math Camp when you struggle a bit, when you get stuck, but I encourage you very seriously to be as persistent and consistent as you can with your work ethic. Stick to it. I guarantee you it will work out in the end. And importantly, always remember that what you're learning in Math Camp, it really will have real world applications to public policy because we've made sure of it. Thank you for that, David. Uh, I'm Rohan Shah, and uh, welcome to Math Camp. Now, in Math for Public Policy, we're going to be covering algebra and calculus. Now, that sounds like that, that is 12 years worth of math, and so breaking it down in just a few short weeks, uh, what we're doing is we're focusing on just the aspects of that really long curriculum that you're going to need the most. Now, the way to think about what we're going to cover here is that there are two very sort of distinct skills. Uh, one is raw skills, raw technical skills. How do you manipulate equations correctly? How do you solve for variables? How do you take derivatives? What are all the rules involved? So there's that skill that we're going to develop. The, and then the other thing that we're going to develop is uh, intuition, translating skills, things like that, uh, interpreting math. And so, and they're all going to come together in those sort of applied problems that you're going to then mostly do during the core, core classes at Harris. Now, it's useful to think about math as a language. And so the whole point of doing math in this sort of public policy context is instead of you stating your idea in a few sentences, which could often be interpreted ambiguously, it's often useful to write down a model, which is really often a mathematical equation. And so writing it down as an equation forces you to think about it more carefully, and more importantly, it helps other people interpret it unambiguously. And often what you'll find is in the real world, you know, You'll state an idea in a few sentences, and you'll try to work on it more, and people will just debate around each other in a few sentences and make no progress on it. But when you translate that into an equation, it now unlocks this toolbox of all sorts of things that you can do to analyze that equation. And once you analyze that further, once you've translated it from English to math, you've now analyzed that so much deeper, so much further, and you end up with a solution, a newer take on that problem in math, which you could then learn to translate back into English, and now you have a solution that you previously didn't didn't think of, and so so those are the two different other skills that we're going to work on within that. One is how do you translate from uh, English to math, 
which is where you have to take ownership over things, right? So you look at a real world scenario and you got to think to yourself, you know what, I'm going to call that thing X and that other thing Y and think about an equation that relates those two. And on the other hand, translating back from math to English is you got to look at an equation and, you know, freak out at first, but then say, you know what, actually, uh, how does this equation, what, is it, what does it mean? What do all the different terms mean? And how did their relations change if I were to change these numbers and these parameters around a little bit? Things like that. So these are all the things that we're going to hopefully work on in the next few weeks. How exactly is math useful for analyzing public policy? Well, let's say that two people are debating between how much money the government should spend on developing a vaccine for coronavirus. Let's say one person says that we should spend a lot of money because the more money we spend, the fewer people will die and that we should try to be minimizing deaths. And let's say somebody else says that, well, the more money we spend on a vaccine, the less money we're spending on other coronavirus relief measures and that overall more people will die. Uh, how do we take both of these statements and try to reconcile them, taking into account the fact that the possibility that both of them might be right in some way? And, and so... Basically, one person is essentially claiming that if you were to graph the dollars spent on the vaccine with the total number of deaths, one person is essentially claiming that that's a negative relationship. In other words, they're claiming that the derivative, which is the slope of this function, is negative. And on the other hand, somebody else is claiming that it's actually positive, that you know, and so if this is the debate that the two people are having, then, you know, at least framing it this way, that th these aspects of the derivative are what they're debating about, uh, seems like, all right, we just put some technical language on something, but that doesn't really help us further the debate. Well, then what you do is you maybe collect some data. And so the, you might collect data on other, other types of diseases and how much money governments in general spend on vaccines and how that relates to deaths. And let's say you then get what we call a scatter plot. And let's say that the scatter plot looks something like this. Well then, using econometrics or statistics, you would then find what's called a line of best fit, or in this case, a curve of best fit. And essentially, if you wanna to try to make predictions that the relationship might look something like that, let's say you find that. Well now, looking at this, we could see that both people in some way were right because if you focus on this portion of the graph, the derivative, meaning the slope, is in fact negative. The relationship between these two variables is negative, meaning the more you spend on a vaccine, the fewer people die. But on this part of the graph, it looks like, yeah, once you've already spent a lot of money on the vaccine, then spending more will actually cause more deaths because it's taken away from other things. And so, Basically, you might find that both people are right just on different domains of that function. And overall, once you have a good estimate of what the overall relationship between these two variables are, you can then try to find some common ground and say, all right, well, you know, just because you're right that spending money on the vaccine lowers deaths doesn't mean we should spend an infinite amount. And also just because you're right that on some point, at some point, it's going to have a negative return doesn't mean we shouldn't spend anything at all. So we could then finally use the tool of calculus to find where this function is minimized. Because once you have that function, instead of guessing and checking at different points, you could just find where the derivative is zero. And that's that basically is a fancy way of saying where the curve is flat. And in this case, where it's flat, right here, it's downward sloping, here it's upward sloping, but it's only flat at one point. And the place where it's flat is in fact the minimum uh, depths. And so once you get an estimate for that, based on your data, you then have a number. And then you can budget in your government that that's how much we're going to spend on the vaccine because that's our best estimate for uh, minimizing debts.